uh, I used to work at Whole Food. So when I came in in 2005, I went and worked Whole Food. So after working at Whole Food, I, I saw what kind of like unique products they had. I was like, I started to get into the food more and more, starting to like, like what kind of food they have, what they come from, how they do it. So I started to cook my own food, do my own uh, stuff, create my own products. And then I said, what would be good for me to learn the financial background of the business? So my wife suggested to go banking. So I started working in banking as a teller and I started to go up like about 10, 15 years in the banking at the same time exploring the food. So every time I had a free time, I would go to a specialty shop, just walk around. So I was like, okay, what can I do? So once I started to go to the shop and start to find out like uh, how every shop is designed, all the products designed, so I decided one shop has just the olive oil, nothing else. It's just you go in there, you buy olive oil. One shop has just the spices. And then one shop has just uh, tons of tea, but they're not all together. So it's like, why not having a shop that we can put all together in one place? So customers come in and they're like, okay, we have 50 different kind of olive oil, 50 different kind of tea, spices, and that's what the idea came to me, or cheese, you know. I started to build idea on that. I started to do a lot of research in 2013, 2014, and how much it would cost me, would I get money from to start it, because I didn't have like liquid assets to put towards and where it would cost me, what location would be best for it. So I started my research and I started little by little take every different tea stores and choose the one that looks really nice. And then same thing with all other like cheese shops, uh, tea shops, you know, uh, olive oil shops. So I put it all together, came up with my plan, so what I'm gonna do. So, and I had a perfect store set up in my mind and so I started to look at location. So in 2015, uh, 2014 actually, I find Belmont location, I was like, oh, this is perfect because I can, I can start to do like um, all of the, uh, like having like all the walls and do set up like nice and clean so customers come in and they have like square ones like uh, everything on the walls, everything on the middle, but have free space they can walk around and feel comfortable, not everything cluttered. So I, in 2015, finally find the space, did renovation and open it up. So when customers came in, everybody was like, this is, looks nice. We can't come with the stroller and not having a problem walk around. So <laughs> they like the idea, they like the setup, they like the design, but when I realized it, yeah, it does look good, it looks nice, it's comfortable, but there's not enough product and tons of space. So I start to get more feedback from customers, add more product and keep adding. So since 2015, we've been in business about five years now, I keep changing. Every time my customer come in, every six months they see some changes. And it's really, they get a good, I get so much good response. I bring new products, I exchange the product, get a, everything different. So at the same time, I was working at the bank too. You know, I was a bank manager, had my store here. Yeah, tell us about that. At what point did you have to, um, you know, you were, you were given a choice. So tell us about that. What happened is when, when I had the uh, Belmont location for art specialties and uh, we got about two and a half year, three year, I decided that I have a lot of inventory. I want to open up the second location. So. Second location came along really fast and we did open it up. So now I had two locations that I had to run and at the same time being a bank manager. So being open on a second location for a year, uh, my boss called me over and it's like, now I know you do have two locations and you run two businesses and you also run your branch, which is kind of like your third location. So I needed to make a decision because if you make a decision which way you want to go, it would be good. If you go to your business, that would be good for you. If you go to your management, that would be good. So you can just run all at the same time. So I, I couldn't in that second sell the store or do anything. So I made a decision to go on my own. And I always wanted to be just having my businesses. It was tough with the financials, but eventually we had to make a decision. So in uh, 
the 17th of 2000, December 17, 2015, of 2017 December, that we decided to not do the banking anymore. Mm -hmm. So then I went in my own, doing my second store, uh, second store, this store, and make this store a little more expansion. So I did 2017 one expansion, and then 2018 another expansion. So and me being in the business and tracking with the customer did help double the sales pretty much for Belmont and the other location about 10, 15 percent. So while I was at the banking, I had an idea. This is when I was tell about my other venture businesses. So once the art specialty pick up, I was like, why not create another business, unique business that we don't have it here and we need, we have a need for it. So that's when I came up with an idea of uh, doing a safe deposit boxes, private safe deposit box, because a lot of banks, you know, they doing the cafe style banks and they don't have uh, boxes anymore for the customers, but the customers still need to have their uh, documents, uh, two stores, fireproof, you know, burglary proof. So I did come up with idea and put the safe deposit box uh, business together, similar, exact same as a bank style, but private for customers. And that's and after that, I start to think like, okay, what else we can do? Uh, my the adventure ventures that I have is the safe deposit box, art specialties, and we're working hopefully to get chartered as a credit union as well for uh, Watertown area only. So, and then I, I had a lot more ideas, but I, my wife is like, you gotta stop it. And I actually had a few mentors, my wife at the same time, they're like, just build this up. Hold those businesses, building up the point that they will run by themselves. Then you can go and do more ventures. So what I did realize is that I like the challenge of creating something that it's hard to be created and uh, to build them from ground zero to see what it gets to, how far it goes and what it becomes. So creating something that makes me expiring, ex ex uh, ex expired, excited. excited, you know, get so excited, oh, I created this, you know, I built this up from zero, you know, and then you see what the success comes from it. That gives me more excitement than the money itself, financial itself, you know, everything else. It's just seeing the customers come in and they like in it. So that's the exciting part. So how about some, how about some uh, lessons for other entrepreneurs? So you started, you had a, you really, you did your, your own research, you started this place out. What did you learn about customers? So a couple of things. First thing I want to ask you is what did you learn about customer tastes and satisfying customer need while also kind of being true to the idea of wanting to curate your own shop? You know, you had what you wanted to do, then there's what customers want. That's what I want to ask first. And the second question I want to ask to you is the business difference between, between operating in a more urban, you know, really expensive town here and then also having a second location in a maybe a rising, uh, more uh, you know, uh, family town. Um, so, so the first one is, I guess, uh, the comparing, uh, you know, what you want to do versus what customers want, and responding to customer needs. And it is. It, that's true. That's one of the huge part. You will have like huge customers base coming up, and everyone gives their opinion what you should have, what you should bring, what they will respond to. But what I decided to do is take their opinions, but not just do every single one of them. Just uh, do taste, you know, test it, test it out. I would have say no, but I would have bring one small area and say, okay, I have this. And then I pitch that to all of my customers. I have this new stuff and see what the response would be. So that was kind of like having a big risk. But at the same time, I also try every single product in my store. So every single wine and beer, and until I taste it, I won't bring it in. So if it tastes good to me, you know, and right after that, if I pitch the same product to the customer and they come back with a response, good response, that means that product was good, so it uh, stays in the store. Sometimes I might taste it and say, this is good, but then when I pitch to the customer, and the customer like, yeah, that's okay, you know, it's gone. So it would uh, the choice of the product having in the store, it was between me and the customers, like we both taste it and then we give a test run, see how it is. I, I did, I do 
have to keep track of that a lot because it's a lot of work. Like some shops you will see, they will stick with product, one product and they leave that it is, you know, it works. I'm gonna leave it, not touch it. I'm not gonna bring anything new. For me, if I change it, if I bring a lot of new stuff that good for me to see what's the customers respond this and what's I, uh, you know, what we like to sell and see something new, not the same thing all the time, all the time. So, but it's also risk too, because you gotta put a lot of cash flow, a lot of space in the store. And for me, I did have a space, but I didn't have a cash flow, but just taking a risk helps me with the cash flow as well. So, what I find out is even though it's up and coming town in Maynard, but all these new families, they do want to try something new. So what I did is, uh, I try not to be like, okay, this uh, Belmont is a little uh, high-end town, so I'm gonna have a higher prices. I always keep the same margin and wanted to have the same kind of margin that doesn't matter what I am in, you know. As long as it covers my expenses, I have set expense, I'll do the same thing for Maynard. So and that's what I did. I, I didn't raise the prices, I didn't change the prices, I kept the same. And I brought all the products to Maynard and to see where we sell. So I find out Maynard actually does sells a lot more high-end products than Belmont. Belmont is actually does more like local, uh, regular stuff. Really? Maynard is more like into local stuff, and I do have a lot of local products. So Maynard wanted his local stuff. So and because having a good price is not having a huge margins. Maynard did respond well having a like specialty shop in their town and they all support to it. Yeah. It was a, it was interesting. A lot of people were saying it's risky to put a shop in Maynard, but you know, every town needs it. You know, it doesn't matter how the town changes, they still need it. So it, 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 it again, it's like every time I figure out it has the risk associated to it. So. No, I would have. I would have done this again. I would have. I, I still want to open more shops. I want to keep doing it. The only thing, every time, like we see, we read the books, we see interviews, we uh, we hear other entrepreneurs. They advise, saying like, follow the cash flow. We all say yes, yes, but we don't follow. I really say, truly, truly, that's the biggest thing. Do follow the cash flow. Everyone thinks of like, oh yeah, we will, we will get there, we have enough. We'll, no, there is never enough for the cash flow. The huge part, myself as well, I, I knew the cash flow is the biggest problem in every business and every, every business owner that would have come to me and I ask advice, that's the first advice they give, but we don't take that advice. We all think of, it won't happen to me, it won't happen to me, but that's the, again, I would give the same advice. <laughs> cash flow is the best. If you have the cash flow, you can build up a lot of businesses and be successful if you have the cash flow. If you don't have a cash flow, you might have a successful business, you might make money on the business, but you run out of a cash and you run out of business because of that cash flow. So that would be my best advice. The, the best advice I'll give is don't look what resources they have, what uh, amount of uh, investment they're going to do. Just make sure the person's character matches to you. So that if you have the character of that investor, you go with the character, not like how much they bring it into the business, what they bring into business. And the first thing is the character, second thing is don't give out too much uh, equity. Try to do leverage the business, get a loan, you know, from the same investor, you know, and then over time, because they, the way you look, the equity is the most expensive uh, investment, mm -hmm. most expensive loan. To give up. It yeah. could give up, yeah. It doesn't matter if it's 1% or 2% or 10%. Uh, and at the same time, you have to have the right character of the person to understand you, your business, what you're doing, what you're going to do, that's the, those two things are most important for, to me. Oh, that's great. Well, listen, art from art specialties in Belmont and Maynard, and also 
AV uh, armor vaults, uh, now in Maynard, and soon to be a credit union, and who knows whatever else. Thanks, yes. for, uh, <laughs> thanks for the interview. Thanks for your time today. Thanks so much, Chris. Thank you.